All right, what's on the bench? Uh, it's a product by uh, Miniware. I've reviewed a lot of their uh, items before. I like I like Miniware. And uh, they were asking me to review something. I said, I really would like to have one of these. It's an MHP50, a little mini hot plate. And uh, the reason that I wanted it is um, I've gotten a lot of mileage out of this other brand. Um, and uh, I find that I use it a lot more than I thought I would. And there's a few things I don't like about it, and I thought this might solve those problems. One of the problems was the buttons are on the back. So you can imagine to turn it on and off and control it, you have to reach behind because you're wanting to watch the... Uh, here, let me plug it in so you can see the display. So you can see the display is up here in the front. And so when you're doing stuff, you're reaching behind, you have a tendency to touch this hot plate and burn yourself. So I didn't, I didn't like that design. Um, and there's another feature that this has that I, that I find very attractive. So let's take a look at it. Uh, it comes with a manual and a charging cord. Um, and it comes with this nice silicone cover for the, uh, for the hot plate thing, if you want to put it away. Um, but look, the buttons are, oops, sorry. The uh, buttons are in front and the display is in front. So let me, let me turn it on here so you can see it. All right. So again, uh, yeah, the, the buttons, the buttons are in front. So that's, that's a huge advantage right away. Okay. So it's got different modes. It's got, uh, uh, a menu that you can set things in. It's got heating, just like the other one. You turn it on and off, and then you can use the buttons to set the temperature that you want. Um, but this one has a reflow uh, profile, so you can have a three a three step profile um, according to whichever solder you have, and you can change the uh, pre warm, the hold temperature and then the final melt temperature. You can change those three and you can change the timing between those three sections as well. And I'll show that. So that that's a nice, nice feature. Okay. Um, so just to beware, if you buy one of these things, you're going to need a really big uh, uh, power supply, uh, a USB-C power supply. Okay. You're going to need a hundred, a hundred watt version. Uh, when this thing is cranked up, uh, at the very end, doing the final heat, it's drawing about 75 watts, and so um, uh, I have another 65 watt one that wasn't keeping up. So I've got this 100 watt, uh, 100 watt uh, version here that keeps up with it just fine. So that's what I would recommend. Okay, so let's plug it, plug it back in. Get it all on camera here. Um, so let's go to the uh, menu. I should mention once before that it is uh, uh, firmware upgradable and I did flash a new set of firmware in here. Um, so uh, that's all available on their website. If we go into the menu, we hold this down, that goes in the menu. We can set uh, different things. We can set uh, temperatures. I don't know if you can read that on camera, but it's kind of small. But oops, time's up. The, the thing I really wanted to... Um, show here is the reflow. Okay. And so let me zoom down. Yeah, you'll be able to read that better. So we'll go into the reflow. You can see that there's these three sections, A, B, and C. So we have rise time, uh, rise temperature, rise time, keep temperature and keep time, and then weld temperature and weld time. So you can set those A, B, and Cs. And uh, I have them set for uh, 150 degrees C, 170, and 220. And then I have it as 60 seconds, 60 seconds, 60 seconds. I wish you could do a little bit shorter final um, weld. Um, and I haven't figured out how to get it to do that. Um, maybe they'll change that in future software. But 60 seconds is as, is as short as you can go. All right. So if you do heat, it just automatically starts heating up and it goes to whatever temperature you have here. This is T1. Those are programmable in the menu system. T1 is 220. T2 is, uh, oops, T2 is 250 and T3 is 300. So um, that's just the turn it on, heat it up. So that's the way I use my other plate. I just set it at something like 220 and then I would just kind of plop things on there. I didn't have any soak time. It just ramped up and and then I had to turn it off. So I do like the the the, the ramping. Okay. 
And so uh, we will do that. There's also an LED here that changes color. Uh, when it's uh, cool enough, it'll go green. When it's kind of in the middle, it'll be white. And then when it's super hot, it'll be red, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, do something really, really quick here. It's ramping up. Oh, it's uh, still on, so I gotta, oops. Uh, let's see here. I need to let this time out. And then I need to do that. There we go. We're back here. So we'll, we'll let it cool. We'll let it cool down. That doesn't cool down very fast. Um, it's it's nice to maybe have a, a a fan on it to let it to let it cool down. Okay. Uh, but let's go ahead and we'll just take a little board here. I'll just put a couple. Uh, I'll just put a couple of resistors. This is just a dummy board, so I'm just going to put two eight hundred five. Resistors on it for fun. Get out some tweezers here. Uh, we'll go ahead and use. I'll go ahead and use. Oops, too got too many of them. There we go. That should be that should be good. So we'll put it on the board here, but it's still too it's still too warm because I was futzing around with. Okay. So I've got a little fan here, and so you might want to do this as well. A nice uh, oven has a fan built into it, so it helps in the cooling. So I've just turned on the uh, turned on my little fan here, and it'll it should cool down pretty quick. Um, so when we get to a temperature, if you try to start it now, it'll give you an error. You have to wait for the green light. Um, it wants to have that good profile, so it needs you to be below a certain level before it will let you run the profile. All right, so we now have a green light, so we're ready to go. We just push down on the reflow, and so now it's going to start its profile, the, the three numbers that I have programmed in there. It should go up to 150, and then um, it will ramp very slowly between 150 and 170, and when it reaches 170, then it will go up to 220. Let me go ahead and get a little closer while it's doing its thing here. There we go. Okay. Um, the profile that I've put in here, I got from the website for, see, it reached 150 and it beeped, and now it's going to go to 170. I'm using a Kester EP256, and if you go to the data sheet for that, it gives you a, a recommended solder profile, and that's what I have in here. All right, so it reached 170, then it starts to ramp up fast. Uh, the red light comes on, and now we're going up in temperature to 12, so it's getting hotter. I think you can see that the uh, solder is starting to melt now. A um, little bit of smoke coming off of the uh, flux that's, that's part of the solder paste. It has built-in flux. All right, so we're going to hold at the uh, melt temperature for some period of time. Like I said, I wish it was a little bit shorter than this. All right, so uh, once it reached temperature, um, uh, it, it stops and uh, then it starts to cool down. I've added a fan to increase uh, the, the cooling speed, um, but uh, it, it reflowed the parts and everything looks, everything looks good. So I do like that feature that it has the built-in little uh, solder profile. And um, yeah, uh, definitely going to use this over the other one, uh, especially for the buttons in front, so I don't have to reach around and, and scald myself. All right, well, that was my uh, review of the Miniware MHP50. I like it.